In this video, I want to demonstrate how to cut the appropriate size hole in the handle and the screw using the taper pin. The screw will be easy because the pin goes completely through the screw. So I'll start with it. So I'm going to select that screw. I'm going to say edit part. And like we've done many times, I'm going to come up here to the drop down menus and I'm going to say insert mold cavity. And I'm just going to tell SolidWorks, I'll zoom out a bit here so I can expand the feature tree. And again, I'm going to tell SolidWorks wherever that taper pin intersects the screw, remove material. So I'll say OK to create that cavity. I'll stop editing the part and then let's have a look at the screw. So I'll click on it, tell it to open in position. And here we see the hole for the taper pin. All right, and there's the cavity showing the in-context relationship. So I'll rebuild and save this. And control tab back to my vise and next I want to cut the taper hole through this part. One of the issues we're going to have is that the pin doesn't come all the way through. We made it the plane that was at the bottom face of the pin through here. So I'll just demonstrate what will happen if we use the cavity again and we can see what's wrong. So I'll edit this part. Once again from the drop down menu so I'll select the insert, molds, cavity, I'm just going to zoom out a bit so it's easier to select that pin. Tell it where the taper pin interferes. Create that cavity. I'll stop editing that part. And I'll open it in position. And if we look, we see the cavity. It appears good, but it doesn't go through the part. So there's no hole down here. All right, that doesn't go all the way through. So we might be able to assemble the taper pin. We haven't even analyzed which way it's facing. so. This may be the small end of the taper, not the large, which would make it impossible to assemble. But even if we could assemble it, if this were the large end of our taper pin, there'd be no way to easily take it apart. So we need the hole going through. So I'm going to delete the cavity. And say yes, delete that feature. I'll just control tab back to the assembly. I still want to use that pin, but I'm going to use it slightly differently. So I'm going to edit this part. Now, I want to use that pin to create my hole. So if we remember here in the pin, our right plane goes through the center this way. So in that right plane, I'll just zoom in and out a bit, I want to create a sketch. So I'm going to click once in white space. I'll come back here, select the plane, tell I want to sketch. I'm going to zoom in a bit closer. And what I want to use is this pin. And I want to use its edges. So I want to use this edge and this edge to create the cut. So from the convert entities, I can try converting these edges. And that works, I'll accept it. If it didn't work, I'll go to the drop down menu and tell it to create an intersection curve. So I'll just do that. I'll delete these two lines. Because sometimes the convert entities doesn't work the way you would like it to. So I'll say, Create an intersection curve. And this time I just choose the pin. I say wherever that pin intersects the plane. So I've chosen the face of the pin. I'll say OK. And wherever it intersects that plane, it creates this. So it's the same thing as convert entities. Sometimes convert entities doesn't work this well. So I'll close that. And I now have my sketch that I want. To make it easier, I'm just going to finish this sketch in the part. So I'm going to close this, stop editing the part, I'll rebuild this, I'll control tab back to just that part. So here's my sketch, I'm going to edit that sketch now. A little less to see here, and I'm going to drag these converted entities out. All that matters is they start above and below the pin, and I'm going to use them to make a revolve cut. So I'm going to add a couple of lines here. Activate line, and I want a line from here, come across, and I want it halfway between these two, and I'll fix that later. So I'll come a little ways, I'll click. I'm gonna come straight down, click, and I'm gonna create a closed sketch here. I'll push escape. This line I'm gonna change. I'm gonna convert it to for construction. This rectangular shape is what I want, want to revolve cut, but I need this line centered between these two. So to do that, I'm going to activate center line and I'm just going to come 
down here, I'll click, and I'll come over and I'll click, and I'll create that center line. Okay, so that's fully defined. I put it on the edge of this part. And what I want to now do is right click on it, select the midpoint, hold control, select this line, release control, and make those coincident. I now have a shape I can revolve cut, but it isn't fully defined. I have a couple of options, and I'm just going to activate Smart Dimension. And I'll dimension from here to here. All that matters, I'll make it tenth out, is that this is below the part, so we get a nice clean cut. If I zoom up, this is above the part because it was the top of the pin. And I'll say OK and exit that sketch. So next, I'll select my sketch. We can see the in-context relationship here. I'll go to the Features ribbon until I want to make a revolve cut using that sketch. And it won't know what to revolve cut around. I'm just going to zoom in and out a bit here because there's no center line here. So I have to tell it the axis is this part edge. I'll right click and accept that. And now I have a taper pin hole that goes completely through so it can be properly removed when required. I'll rebuild that. I'll control tab back to my assembly and I'll double check that everything looks good. So I'll go to the isometric view. Fit the geometry to the screen, I'll rebuild and save.